Hello and welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. With the playoffs in touching distance, teams continue to jostle for positions as the top six look to solidify their placing while the bottom half of the table look to separate themselves from the dreaded drop. This week, our highlights kick off with our usual Sunday doubleheader which saw a playoff outfit Tivoli Gardens locking horns with playoff hopefuls Dunbeholden Beholden FC. Let's check out the highlights. It's been a tough one for Tivoli over the years, but I think with some crucial players out, as we will see for Dumble Holding, their leading goal scorer, not around Nicholas Nelson, as well as Fabian McCarthy out with injury, as we see a Tivoli Garden starting lineup. I, I like their depth and their strength at this time. Nicholas Clark in goal, Adin Pinnacle, Barrington Price, Anthony Nelson, Alton Lewis, Horatio Morgan, Nikolai Fuller, Nathan Thomas, Lennox Russell, Keena Simpson, and Shaquille Jones for Jerome Waite. No surprise that it will be a 3 4 3. And as you said, Anthony Nelson finally off the mark in the last game, and Nikolai Fuller as well. So big deal for them. John Behold in their starting lineup Damien Height in goal, Siddiqui Burton, Zachy Wills, Devontae Hodges. Shaquille Powell, Donovan Segree, Ricardo Thomas, Carlton Blackwood, Dwight Merrick, Fionn Koopy, the schoolboy from Clarendon College, Marlon Allen, Lenworth Height, their coach. They'll be playing with a 4-3-3. Koopy comes in for the injured Fabian McCarthy. Full match highlights. Stefan Duar sent it off early in this one. Innocuous back pass from Zakia Wilkes under normal circumstances, but there was no normal circumstance here. Damien Hyde with a swing and a miss. And he must rue that when the highlight reel is played. Tivoli Gardens getting the go-ahead goal courtesy of Zachary Wilkes. Perhaps not necessarily against the run of play. They had the right to start the Tivoli Gardens. As evidenced by attempts like this. This one from Anthony Nelson to the side netting. And again, Nathan Thomas with a brilliant pass to Horatio Morgan, trying to get it to Nelson. His first touch didn't set him up well enough. And a good defensive work as well also brought some help for Dunby Holland. Here's where the game would have turned for them. A shot in the back by Nikolai Fuller on Siddiqui Burton. Didn't need to do that, did the youngster. And Ricardo Thomas, look where the ball ended. Firm in the back post and the supporters for Dunby Holden rejoicing. Here's where Tivoli Gardens almost went ahead. Shaquille Jones with a header that Damien Hyde had to pull out all the stops. Stops literally and shell shot there. Damien Hyde forced to make a save with his leg there. Adin Pennicott, you'd have expected him to at least bring that one on target, unable to do so. And this shot from Shaquille Paul flashed wide. Nicholas Clark was happy to see it go out of touch. And that's where the game ended. Full time, one all between Tivoli Guns and Dunby Holden. Here's a full time st highlights, statistics rather. Two on target from nine attempts from Tivoli, one from four from Dunby Holden. 37 fouls, only three yellow cards to Tivoli, one for Dunby Holden. No red cards one offside for tivoli 11 corners six for tivoli two saves made by dunby holden and a damon height in particular they have the line chief possession 61 in a match that overall lacked quality and perhaps a fair result in the end the one all between tivoli guns and dunby holden the man of the match is standing with chris taylor let's hear what he has to say Ricardo, another man of the match performance for you. Not an easy battle against Tivoli Gardens, but how important is it even to come away with a point? Uh, I think we did want the cheap points, but we are grateful for the point um, on the road. We are very grateful for the point. Ricardo, converting from the spot. Lenny, your captain put it away, but you must, when you analyse this one for us, I'm sure you'd say it, it lacked quality. Yeah, man, definitely. You know, ugly, a very ugly game today. I think the pitch. You see how the first goal score and us, it, 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 it wants some little moisture on the, on the turf today. We didn't handle it well. Hence, you see why we play so much long ball today. I told them to just forget about the passing game and try and go direct. And I, I think both teams were doing that. That's why it looked like that. You know? uh, not the easiest battle against this man, Jerome Wade. 
Well, Jerome, two tough battles, and you haven't been able to really break down the double holding side. Two draws in the season. Assess it yes. for me. Yes. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you can see the playing surface rob the team of some good football, and that resulted into the game. You notice the first goal come from, you know, I mean, the, the, the bumpy, this of the field result in the ball beating Hyatt. And then, you know, the other one is one of those things where the, the youngster make a contact result in a, a penalty. But the game is not much that you can talk about because the, the, the field wasn't good enough. But in the end, I think both, both teams, you know, um, gave a good account of themselves. So Tivoli Gardens and Dunn Behold and share the spoils to sit in third and sixth place respectively in the standings. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Join us for more after the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The second match in our Sunday doubleheader featured former champions Harborview taking on the resurgent Malines United. Let's pick up the full match highlights. Here's the Harborview lineup. Change in goal, Romario Palma comes in for Glenroy Samuel. Orderland Harding remain Brackenbridge, Garth Stewart and Akima Jones, the back four that has started for predominant uh, part of the, this season. Tidalo Chukwemeka, Demar Rose and Trey Bennett in the middle of the park. Ruan Brown, Omar Thompson, and David Reed, the youngster at the top. They're coached by Ludlow Bernard, 4-3-3. That's how they line up. Getting ready for the Mullines United lineup. They line up as a 4-4-2. Peter Harrison in goal. Enrique Gordon, Adain Samuels, Sean Duar, and Romario McPherson. At the back four, Jeremy Nelson, Johnny Flemings, Ronaldo Barrett, and Javon Brown. The midfielders and Dante Duncan. Uh, a relatively new signing for them. His first start is Dante Duncan and Jason Wright up top. Of course, the leading scorer is Jason Wright. Full match highlights. Harborview. Coming forward. We're giving that one away rather. And uh, Ronaldo Barrett was alert to the opportunity. Couldn't bring it on target. Dante Duncan in the first half having the best opportunity for more lines. Forcing a double save from Romario Palma. Another look at it. Palma there in the thick of things. Did have an injury scare there. Harborview on the other end. We're trying to create some opportunities for themselves. This header from Omar Thompson forcing a save from Peter Harrison. Doing well at his near post. 30 seconds later, going low. And eking that one out from the goal. And the Malines kept in courtesy of his own brilliance. Brian Brown there causing bewilderment from the coaching staff. That was the end of the first half. Second half action now. Malines trying to get in the thick of things. Jason right there firing straight to God Stewart. Again, turning, getting the opportunity, unable to connect with the ball though. Jason Wright, the leading goal scorer for this team. But Jeremy Nelson came forward. Daniel Hardy, the substitute collected. And what a delivery to the back of the net. Beating Palma at the near post with fury. Daniel Hardy, what a strike. 1 0 for Malines. The sports make that moment. Sue. Loving the action. Harborview, they continue to try to fight. And at the end, Tyrese Williams, another substitute for Harborview, forcing a save out of Peter Harrison. And at the death, unable to keep their hopes alive. And that was the final whistle. Councillor Anderson calling things off in this fixture in the Rainer for Jamaica Premier League. Full time stats. Five shots on target from 11 attempts, three from six for Malines. 19 fouls producing five yellow cards, four to Harborview, only one to Malines. There were three offsides, two of them to Harborview, 
They had six corners, only one from Alliance. Two saves made by Palma in goal, five made by Peter Harrison, and that pretty much kept them in the game. Harborview having the lion's share of the possession, 59%. But Malines with the all important goal, the Bob Marley, the one love. And what love is being shown to the goalkeeper, Peter Harrison? He stands by ready for the man of the match interview. Peter, clean sheets have been hard to come by for Malines. How big was this one today? This one was a very important one, you know. Every match you play from now is a final. I want to stay in the league and keep playing top flight football in Jamaica. You're very vocal, especially in the first half with that double save. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk to me what goes through your mind when there's not a lot of action happening down by your end, a.k.a. in the second half, and then turn up with that big save just near the end. Yeah, we have to keep focusing you know, right through the game because in previous game we're, 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 we're dropping points at the 90, 91 minutes, so it was a very crucial save at the end. A 1 0 win for Malines, and in fact, the first time that Malines have ever defeated Harbour View in the Jamaica Premier League. The frustrations continue for you, Ludlow. Uh, not the result you are looking for, obviously. Not the result, but of course, I think I can speak to the effort that was made by the guys out there, you know. Um, some good goalkeeping certainly denied us of some good chances that we got. But we, there was one clearly at the end of the first half which we should have taken and that would have changed the whole process of the game. Head coach of Harbour View and a struggle. Jermaine, well, history has been made today. I'm not sure if you, were sure, you knew of this from before, but it's the first time Malines have ever defeated Harbour View in the Premier League. It took some time, but well-deserved victory for you today. Yeah, I mean, I heard about it. We... We came into the game knowing that I, I, I told the team from in the week that we wanted to, to accumulate at least 30 points at the end of the season and we are, we are working towards that. Strong team, even the changes off the bench had a big impact. Daniel Hardy missed mm -hmm. out on a, on a starting position today but yet came off with the kind of energy needed to, it, to, to, to score the kind of goal he scored. I mean, good. We, we started well um, in, in, the, in the probably first 10 minutes of the second half. We, we kind of, you know, were a bit flat and we introduced Arden and Dennis and um, Livingston and they, they, they impacted immediately and I thought that really made a difference. So Malines United continue to pull away from the bottom two as their fifth win see them move into ninth place in the standings while Harborview continue to struggle after suffering their 11th loss and are just above the relegation pack. We take another break here on JPL in 30. More football action right after this. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The lone Monday night fixture saw home side Arnett Gardens taking on bottom club Lime Hall Academy. Here are the highlights. Let's see if the encounter will be in a favour of the visitors or the home team. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. of Arnett Gardens. Eric Edwards in goal, Joel Cunningham, Shivani Willis, DeAndre Cunningham, Philander Wing, Rashane Thompson, Jamon Shepard, Roderick Granville, Martin Martin, Rashiki Kelson, and Kahim Dixon, their head coach is Xavier Gilbert. Prayers rise for Lime Hall. Let's have a quick look at their lineup. Damian Robinson in goal. Damani Sewell, the captain, Ron Sewell. Carlos Campbell, Jimoy Jones, Devontae Redman, Marlon Pennicook, Sergey Anderson, Marlon Buckley, Kevin Harrison, and Omar Walters, their head coach is Hopton Gilchrist. Full time highlights. This matchup had the Predators versus the Prey in the jungle. And Arnett Gardens, they started well. Cunningham there at the near post, trying to cause some damage. There was some amount of self inflicted wounds from Lime Hall, almost causing danger. And Rashiki Kelson, his shot going wide. And Jaheim Williams making that error. But had a good save in this particular instance. Blocking Jamon Shepard from his shot thrown goal. And again, he came up trumps after Kahim Dixon fired with fury. What a save from Williams. 
his second real save of the afternoon. And there were some more moments for him. Here, perhaps a comical moment. Marlon Pennycook, free on goal. And there was nothing to write home about from that one. The first goal came from that delivery from Philander Wing. Ended up being an own goal. Buckley under pressure from Kimani Arbo and the substitute. He headed it in his own goal. Disappointment for Lime Hall. They were standing firm, but architects of their own demise in that particular instant. Only a minute later, Jane Thomas playing that one forward. Ball played in the path of Kaim Dixon and a goal hungry. Kaim Dixon will do nothing but convert that. Jimoy Jones giving that one easily on a platter to him. And Jaim Williams, more frustration, but more joy. Perhaps the flick will have to be worked on. But he had the goal. A shot there from Arboyne. Saved. Shea Smith lined up that one. Had a wicked deflection that it went off the upright as well. Danger averted in the end. Here comes McGregor across. There was an offside call there. And Arboyne combining with Dixon again. Another save. And McGregor off the upright of the crossbar, ra rather. Chase Jaheim Williams injuring himself in the landing and eventually would have to be substituted. Another strike here from Thomas. Good build up play from DeAndre Cunningham and Thomas, the substitute, finishing coolly. That was goal number three for Arnett Gardens. Jaime Thomas getting that one. Another shot in the end after an outfield player came in the goal and kept them in a respectable margin. Nikolai McCoy, what a moment he had in the final moments in goal for Lime Hall. Here's a full-time statistic. 14 shots on target from 23 attempts. Still Lime Hall having no shot on target, three attempts. Some 21 fouls in this encounter. 13 of them to Arnett Gardens, two yellow cards to Lime Hall players, one to Arnett Gardens, one offside for Arnett Gardens, the eight corners, five for Arnett, 11 saves made by uh, the combination of Jaheim Williams and Nikolai McCoy, and 35% uh, of the possession to Lime Hall, 65 to Arnett Gardens, and uh, three goals as they consolidate themselves on equal points with the rest of the table, but they are behind in goal difference they are jointly on 42 now with Tivoli and Portmore fourth and third respectively they are still in fifth we're standing by for the man of the match interview let's hear what Philander Wing has to say Philander from your high school days you've been a real utility player for all your coaches how much are you enjoying the overlapping left back role for Xavier Gilbert well it's good but I'm still growing at the end of the day so it's a learning process for me and look for more this season. How much more does it require from you to actually go up in the attacking third and then get back and, and execute those tackles as well? Well, I'm a player that run, like to run, so it's not an hard task for me. Oshin, a tough one as you expected again today. You have on your bag already, ready to go home. But um, for some of the game, spirited performance, but you fell away in the second half. Yes, it was a hard part one, but I guess after the own goal, it brings the team in a sleeping mood and we don't know what comes after. Extra small squad for you today as well. That must have been disappointing. What, only four substitutes? The end of the game were actually with 10 players because you didn't have an additional substitute. How tough was that for you? Well, well, not the additional substitute, but we run out and changes because of the, the windows. But I see we, we shot on gears today because we get the away gears short and some players have their gears at home. So. Even yeah. though you conceded three goals, Jaheim Williams was brilliant between the sticks. Yeah, on I, save. He must have been one of must have been have has been one of your standout players so far this season. Well, I have him for the man of the match for tonight, but I guess the three goals beated him today. Xavier, 
not the most fluent performance by your team, but at the end of it, you it's the first three points against Lime Hall. Yeah, and that's what counts, you know, three points tonight. We really wanted to put on a better show, to be honest. Um, I think we're a little bit impatient, especially in the, in the first half. We weren't connecting our passes. Um, uh, second half was a little bit better. Um, and, I mean, we managed to, to put them under a little bit of um, pressure and score some goals, you know. But it wasn't our, um, our best um, in terms of fluidity. But such is the nature of the game. We just wanted three points and we're glad we get it. You spoke to the team about the need not to be complacent. In that first fixture, you thought complacency was one of the reasons. You started the second half as a bit slow. Did you at any point feel that it was complacency from your team? For the, for the second half, no. To, to be honest, um, second half we made some adjustments. And, um, you know, we, we, players bring different things. When you're looking at the game and think what this player can bring to this game now, um, in terms of their position and their, their creativity and what they have to offer. Um, and I thought that... You know, we just needed a little bit more life, a little bit more spark, a little bit more positive going forward. I, I got that from the persons who came on, you know. Full list of results for match week 22. Tivoli Gardens and Dunby Holden, one all draw. Portmore and Waterhouse nil all. Uh, Humble Lion and Veer. Three goals for Humble Lion. Mount Pleasant beating Cavalier. Two goals to nil. One nil. Malines ahead of Harbour View. Same score line for Montego Bay over Treasure Beach. And... Uh, the just concluded fixture, Arnold Gardens beating Lime Hall three goals to nil. Here's the table after the full list of matches in match week 22. Mount Pleasant 49 points, Cavalier just behind them on 45 points. Tivoli Gardens, Pope Mernonet jointly on 42 points with goal difference. Seeing Tivoli Gardens stay ahead of Pope Mernonet, Dunby Holden round of the top six with 34 points. So Arnett and Tivoli and Portmore perhaps safe in the top six at the moment as Waterhouse and Montego Bay in 31 po on, on 31 points, 7 and 8. But at the bottom, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall, 12 and 7 points, respectively. Harborview and Humble Lion just outside the relegation zone, 19 and 22 points. And that's how we put a wrap on another edition of JPL in 30 on your home of champions on Sportsmax. Tune in next week for more exciting football action.